Hey guys, how's it going? Jay here. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing because this is where we talk about hi-fi stuff. Now, funny enough, a lot of the modern drivers are better, but the old drivers had something that made them special in my opinion. Now there's a large debate with any audio topic, right? But this is one of those topics where, you know, it's like tube versus solid state. A lot of people love solid state. A lot of people love tubes and they swear by it. So don't get too, you know, caught up on that in the comment section. Let, make it civil. So we're talking about Alnico drivers. So if you've been in the hobby for a while, you're familiar with the term. If you're new to the hobby, then you probably never heard about the term. Now, Alnico drivers were largely used back in the day, and the Alnico stands for aluminum, nickel, and cobalt. And these three materials were used in conjunction to make a compression driver that would be used in multiple uh, speakers like the JBLs and uh, Tannoys and so on. And perhaps one of the reasons why people really sought after these Alnico drivers and swore by them was perhaps because they were used in the higher tier, more pricey JBL and Tannoy speakers back in the day. Now, nevertheless, I had various different experiences with the vintage world, including Tannoy's, JBL's, um, Altex, and so on. And I've had the pleasure of owning multiple different Alnico driver-based speakers. And my experience with them have been very positive. And here's why. So I remember opening up the back of my JBL L300 and finding this big compression driver in the back for the mid. And that was just a very interesting experience because instead of having these little compression drivers nowadays uh, or having you know something that is a little bit more compact, you had this big gigantic driver that was just screaming quality and build quality. Everything was just very well made. And if you were to measure these after years, years of playing in studios, because a lot of these were used in studios as well, you know, in theaters, especially with the Altec speakers, and years and years of playing them, they would still measure perfectly when you were to measure uh, the specs of the drivers. So there were very little deviations and uh, spec changes with the driver. They were still to spec after decades. And that to me is just very, very impressive. Now, a lot of people will argue, oh, you know, the Alnico drivers are better. And some will say there's no way the modern drivers are better. This is actually ironic because it's very, very close to the argument of tube versus solid state. Solid states measure better. There's, there's no doubt about that. Most solid states measure better than tube amplifiers. Yet a lot of people love the musicality, the smoothness, and um, the warmth that the tube amplifiers provide. In the very similar way, Alnico drivers would be known to be very smooth sounding while having this gigantic you know, sound stage and smoothness, you know, very good with tube amplifiers. So it had a lot of similarity with tube amplifiers and people found it musical. However, like I said, modern drivers measure better and going from big 15 inch drivers to small drivers today, a lot has changed where even the 10 inch drivers today has come to a point where the base is tighter, it is able to move in much, much bigger excursions and so on. But that's another topic for another day. But coming back to my experience with them, I just found them to be nothing but positive. I mean, yes, the current titanium compression driver and magnesium uh, titanium combination, compression drivers and so on is smaller, they measure better, they're more clean and you know lower distortion and stuff like that. But there was something about the Alnico drivers that just sounded so good. And it's not like some people out there that has this uh, nostalgia about them, right? Because I never had 
any nostalgia about Alnico drivers. In fact, I got the speaker and later found out about the Alnico drivers in my attempt to understand the sound characteristic and why the speaker sounded the way it did. And through that experience, I really began to love Alnico drivers and really appreciate the sound, the build quality, and the pure engineering that went into these drivers. They were not cheap to make. And if you were to make them today, I cannot imagine what the cost will be. And in fact, some companies do make Alnico drivers, but they are either smaller um, or, you know, they're very expensive. And there's many reasons to why these drivers no longer exist. And one of the reasons being that, you know, companies have moved to, you know, better measuring drivers and, you know, better materials and so on that they claim. And rightfully so, rightfully so. I think I agree that it, it is a bit of better material in terms of measurements and so on. But there was something, like I said, about the Alnico drivers and the piece of engineering that went into them was just spectacular. And if you were to pair these with tube amplifiers, they would just sound miraculous. They had lots of energy you know, impact, dynamics, and they were really, really great for rock music. They had, you know, great dynamics, energy, you know. Yes, even though they had these 15-inch drivers, most of them didn't punch as hard or go down as low as modern speakers. But overall, speakers like Tannoy and, you know, JBL speakers had this beautiful, beautiful bloom. I, I call it bloom, right? This bloom and full sound with great energy that made your foot tap. And one of the biggest reason was the Alnico drivers and they don't make it anymore, which makes me a little bit sad. And it makes me wonder, it makes me wonder because Alnico driver was a part of why these speakers sounded the way it did. But we all know that, you know, speakers are not just drivers, the cabinet matters, the uh, crossover matters and all the overall implementation matters, right? So it just makes me wonder what, 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 what would we have today if we had those Alnico drivers and we had modern technology to improve upon them in a modern speaker design, if that makes sense to you. That just makes me wonder as a person who really likes Alnico drivers and also reviews modern gear. So there is still, you know, availability in terms of buying vintage, but they are going to be at one point no longer in this world. And that makes me sad. So that's it from me. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if this video was helpful to you in any way or form. And also consider supporting us on Patreon to keep these honest videos coming. Thank you very much. And I'll see you on the next one.